Hey guys, what's up? This is Stock Retail coming back. Um, last 24 hours have been pretty eventful. So yesterday we had the announcement on the settlement um, and after hours, obviously both AMC and Ape went kind of bonkers. Uh, today, been a real interesting day in terms of price action, news, shills, um, Depending on which community you're in, I'm sure you've seen a lot of action. So I tend to be more in the Twitter space with Twitter apes. So I've seen a lot there. Um, and some of you may be on YouTube or Facebook or Reddit. Um, I'm sure that you've all seen a lot of the same things I'm seeing. So what I want to review is, since yesterday, what have we learned? Kind of a recap of what's happening with the settlement. I will walk through um, some scenarios of kind of if you own X shares, what do you end up with after all the dust settles? Just walk through the math on all of it so we can all understand. Confirm um, who's getting this settlement and how's that working. Um, maybe freeform a couple things I, I'm you know shared yesterday that I'll just kind of repeat today, and then also I'll kind of talk about AMC's situation. So um, repeat a couple things from a past video where I kind of talk about how the setup is amazing in terms of the timing where AMC sits. If you've seen that video, I'll kind of clearly um, show you where we are and, and you can kind of skip forward when I get to that part. But I just want to make sure everyone sees what's happening now, what's about to happen, and where does that position us. Um, so as always, I'll try to share as much fact as I can, uh, backed up and sourced so that you can fact check this. I always say, don't trust me, bro. Um, that's what gets people in trouble is too much trust me, bro. And that's how you end up listening to the wrong voices, in my opinion. If you learn how to do DD, you learn how to fact check, you start to be able to be stronger. And frankly, if you're stronger, the whole community is stronger. We help each other. That's why hashtag apes together strong. We all contribute something together. I believe that from the bottom of my heart. This is just me contributing my thoughts. Um, and that's not going to mean that I'm right. There's no celebrities. There's no leaders as far as I'm concerned in the ape community. You know, all people equal. We do this together. So sorry for that rant. Let's just go ahead and jump forward into the details. So first off, what is this settlement? Um, I'm actually starting to look at it as I digested it last night, and um, a few people, I think, DM'd me after I said some things. It sounded like a lot of apes were having the same response. Um, I think I tweeted a couple things, and some apes said, oh yeah, that's what we're talking about in this space call over here, or that's what I said in this tweet over there. So I think a lot of us were having the same response, that this sort of looks and feels like a dividend. Um, a dividend of AMC shares. So we'll go through here. Uh, who's getting it? How's that working? Why do I view this as a dividend? Um, so if you saw in the settlement, which I kind of screenshot a few things yesterday, today there's more uh, tweets that I saw that actually show the... So yesterday what I was screenshotting was an 8K. You can go to the SEC Edgar side and you can find that 8K that AMC filed that has all of the language of what told me what's happening. But there's even more also that some apes have, at least I saw tweeted, some of the court docs. So the court docs had a little more detail in them as well, uh, that first off, the language definitely confirmed what the math already told us yesterday. So that's why I'm going to show you the math in a minute. Just to get to the punchline, really, it's all shareholders, as far as I'm concerned. Again, don't trust me, verify that, do your own DD. But from what I can see, both in the court docs and in that 8K yesterday, this is all shareholders. And I kind of knew that right away. Here's why. Um, you know, as much as I had opposed the Allegheny, um, Allegheny, whatever, their lawsuit, uh, they were purporting to represent all AMC common shareholders. So their defense or, d or debate or whatever was um, that they felt AMC common shareholders were kind of getting the short end of the stick on this conversion, that APE shareholders were getting a better deal. Um, the reason I opposed it is, well, I hold both and always have, you know, we all came into this from AMC and received a, uh, and as an AMC common shareholder, I did not want this conversion to be stopped. So, but either way, their class in this class action was common shareholders, AMC shareholders. Um, so I kind of knew right away, um, that this settlement uh, that's getting paid out to, if you looked at the documentation, it's getting paid out to their class that they represented. Well, that's the common shareholders. Hold that thought too, because that piece about AMC common shares is going to be important. All right, so on the math, in the documentation, you can end up seeing, basically look at the bottom here, there's effectively like 6.922 and some change million shares. That's post-reverse split. And so if you just do the math, 
you can kind of get to it. So remember that this, what I'm calling dividend, is one AMC share for every seven and a half AMC shares you own after the reverse split. Or think about it as if you want to do like pre-reverse split math, you'd get 10 AMC shares now for every 75 you own, kind of like that. Um, but it's actually happening post-reverse split. And so if you just do the math on like how many AMC shares they're showing in the documentation, it's this 519.19 basically, you divide by 10, that's the reverse split itself. Then you divide by that seven and a half from the settlement and you get to that 6.922 million shares, which is in the documentation. So what I'm saying is the math, if you even kind of reverse engineer this, the math on what they documented of how many AMC common shares they're going to hand out um, tells you it's against all the existing AMC shares. And if it's against all the shares, you understand that means all the shareholders, you and me and everyone else who owns AMC. Now remember, I'm only talking about AMC common shares here. You're not getting this dividend paid against APE. So just to really underscore for every seven and a half AMC you own post reverse split, and I'm gonna walk through um, a scenario to detail this in a minute, try to make it visual. But for every seven and a half you own, or if you want to say every 75 you own now, you get one uh, post split. Now remember, I said yesterday, there's no fractional shares. So you got to think through, and maybe I'll talk about this when I go through the scenario some more, but just so it can kind of sink in, I'll say it a couple times here. So remember in the reverse split, for every 10 shares you own of either APE or AMC, you'll end up with one share post reverse split. It's a one for 10. And there's no fractional shares on that. So first there's like a step of divide by 10, clean up any fractions that are left over. You'll get cash for those. So say you owned 11 shares of AMC, you're gonna divide by 10, well you only end up with one post reverse split and that, that little guy left over gets sold off and you get the cash for that, okay? But now there's another step that divides by seven and a half for your, this, what I'm calling kind of dividend of AMC shares. Um, so say, let's say you had 80 before the reverse split. Now you end up with eight post reverse split. Well, that's more than seven and a half, right? So there's this little leftover piece um, that you, you are not gonna get a fractional dividend. So there's a fraction element of the reverse split, then there's a fraction element of the this, what I'm calling AMC common share dividend. And so let me walk through that into the scenario in a minute, but it kind of means if just, if you wanna oversimplify for the AMC side, really every 150 you own um, before the reverse split, that's going to make it the cleanest. You'd kind of come out of the reverse split with 15 and then you get your two extra um, AMC and it would all be clean and there'd be no fractions. Don't worry about the fractions, guys. It just means that it's going to um, sell off a piece at the market rate that day um, and you're going to get your cash and you could always turn around and buy more after. So uh, it's nothing I've personally worried too much about. I may look here pretty soon and try to clean up my... Um, amounts like, I don't know, shift between APE and AMC to try to make sure I don't end up with fractions, but I really don't think it's something you should worry about. It's just, let's all understand it. Okay. And then um, as far as the shorts, here's something really interesting. The reason I'm kind of interested that this feels a bit like a dividend, you know, what happens, some of us have believed there might be, um, you know, more shares out there than should even exist, right? So let's focus in hard on AMC. What happens if AMC common shares there are more out there than should exist. So remember, there's this 6.9 million that if you backwards math, comes out to this 519 million we all own, is what that's really saying. Between institutions and apes, there's this 519 million shares of ape, uh, uh, AMC out there. And then if you divide by your seven and a half and all that, and you know post reverse split, AMC is saying, okay, we're gonna give 6.9 million shares of this post reverse split AMC uh, to everybody. Well, they're going to pass that to Computer Share. Computer Share is going to kind of figure out who owns all of the shares. Um, AMC will kind of communicate that. It's, that's the whole, you know, record date and recording your shares and all that. But what happens if um, there really needed to be? I'll make this up. Seven and a half million at you know passed out. Well, that's going to be a problem for anybody who naked shorted, and it's going to be a problem for the brokers and all of the all of the people in the machine, the wholesalers, the market makers, the internalizers, 
if you own 10 shares and I own 10 shares and somebody out there pays a dividend of, let's, I'll just make this up, we were supposed to get a share each, but they thought there was only supposed to be 10 shares, so they only pass out a dividend of one share. And let's say I get that share in my dividend, but you're still sitting there asking your broker, hey, when dividend? And they have to go find that share for you because you were supposed to get that dividend. So somehow or another, and, and I didn't explain that perfectly, it kind of puts pressure on the, the shorts themselves as well, but somebody is going to find you the amount of shares you're supposed to have. And if that adds up across all of us to more than this 6.9 million, then in my mind what that means is there's buying pressure in the market. People are gonna have to go on late exchange and find your shares. Um, you know, I, I've long said no dates on this channel and no silver bullets. I will never promise MOAS. I will never say this is the thing that does it. I will never say a date and I will never say a price. So I am not telling you this is going to force a squeeze. I am absolutely not saying that. Let me be clear. And I'm even saying there's a chance I'm misunderstanding this or I suppose you have to decide if you believe that we own more shares than should exist. I happen to believe that. I've been open about that. Um, I think apes have bought so much over the last couple of years, along with institutions, that that's the case. Um, and I believe our markets are rife with fraud and manipulation. So I would just ask myself, if this is basically acting like a dividend, AMC just says, I'm giving these 6.9 million shares and I'm done. That's all that gets passed out to the market. But what if we need 8 million shares or something? Because the math adds up to that. Then again, what's going to happen is... You know, person A gets their dividend, but now person B still needs it, and their broker's got to go find it. So their broker's basically out hunting for shares and driving up the price so they can deliver this dividend. Uh, that could get real interesting if that's true. Always do DD, question if that's true or not, but it just could get real interesting. Okay, so summarizing this piece, it's all of us. The math proves that. The documents say that. And if there are more required than what AMC is going to pass out, that's going to create some buying activity on the markets. So that'll be interesting to watch. Let's go through a share scenario so you can understand what are you going to end up with. So in this scenario, I'm saying, all right, just for fun, what if you own 150 AMC and 150 APE? And I, I don't want to get into like guessing at the price so you can see clearly why I've picked this price. I just said, let's say it's 801. Um, you're going to need to think through for yourself what price you believe these will be at. Um, I'm going to talk about that more later because I get asked really frequently, you know, should I hold my AMC? Should I buy APE? All of that. You know, I'll never give advice. First of all, we all have said a million times, not financial advice, right? Um, and second, I don't want to be responsible for someone else's portfolio. I can just share with you DD and ask you to do your own DD. So today, let's just use this 801 as an example. If you owned 150 each, that means your portfolio of AMC plus APE is about 2,400 bucks. You can see here at the bottom. 2,403 bucks. Now, we do the reverse split. So each of them turns into 15 shares. You divide by 10, right? Um, and now they're at 80.1 each. Still $2,403. Um, that's one of the big things I've tried to, you know, ingrain in people's minds about this reverse split. If you had $2,400, you know, when you go to bed and you wake up and the reverse split has happened, in theory, you have $2,400. Now that's outside of any market mechanics and how the market's going to respond. Um, and there's a lot to that. By the way, um, one of the things that I get trolled on quite a bit is, oh, reverse splits are always terrible. Uh, that's not true. So yes, it's true there have been a lot of reverse splits that have been bad, but you need to look at the conditions for those reverse splits. They're often over-the-counter um, you know, OTC stocks, so penny stocks, they're often for companies that are you know, approaching bankruptcy and been, have been in a death spiral um, and that have not yet turned their business around. Now let's look at AMC. It is not a penny stock. It is kind of you know, a mid-cap, large-cap company. Um, it is a company that has turned itself around. The fundamentals are improving greatly. And I'm going to talk more about that in this video of what's going on in the business environment. Um, I even believe, you know, just to tip my hand, and I've said this on some other videos, that Q2 may even show positive earnings per share, like a positive bottom, bottom line. Um, that's how good Q2 is in terms of movies and the fact that popcorn has been ramping up. So AMC is turning around its fundamentals. That's not your normal reverse split. And AMC is not an over-the-counter stock. That's not your normal reverse split. You know, you're usually looking at some odd biotech or some company, you know, about to go bankrupt. 
Here's why that matters. I ran a stock filter and you can find these online. I just signed up for a week free on one. Um, there was another ape who had kind of shared with me where I could go look at that. I found a stock uh, filter where I could filter for reverse splits and filter for mid and large cap companies and kind of filter down to companies that were re um, sort of turnaround stories. They were turning healthy. On most of those, I actually found a very different story that there was great positive returns over the next year and then two and then three years as well. In some cases, like high, high triple digit returns. There's nothing promised here. I'm not saying that's for sure gonna happen with AMC, but I am saying if people come at you with all this, oh, reverse splits are terrible stuff, educate yourself and get informed on what kind of reverse splits. What are you talking about? Which companies? What were the conditions? Are those conditions the same as with AMC or are they different? Uh, and I, that really matters. And you can see in the data and see in the history that that really matters. And that way someone can't just troll you on, oh, reverse split, bad, always bad. Um, sorry, you can't see me, but I'm kind of doing a robot here. So probably a terrible robot and you'd laugh at me anyway. Okay, so post reverse split, you still have the same amount of money ignoring any kind of market reaction. And we all know, of course, the market's gonna do something. I'm just keeping it simple here. Now that settlement, so you have those 15 AMC. Remember that this settlement payout, or what I'm kind of calling an AMC common share dividend, is one for every seven and a half you own post reverse split. So in this case, you get these two more AMC. Now remember, they're at $80.1, so you've added 160 bucks in this case. Um, that's a 13% gain on your AMC, or if you had this even Steven kind of um, AMC and Ape, that's basically a six and two thirds percent gain um, from that dividend. Now, um, that's 6.9 million shares post reverse split, or kind of the equivalent of 69 million shares now. So let's talk dilution for a minute. You know, we got to acknowledge it. Sure, it's real. That's 69 million more shares. There's a few reasons I've been okay with it. One is I'm receiving that dividend as a shareholder. So the dividend, you know, often dilution is, let's say Adam goes and he has to sell shares to an institution because he needed cash. Um, you know, I've talked a lot about that on this channel. That's why I was pro, uh, you know, conversion and reverse split and more shares because it's going to give AMC access to capital, which is going to make AMC strong. Well, that kind of dilution is he's sold into the market and, um, you know, it's created selling pressure and we didn't receive those shares. So now we own less of the company. That's the key. In this case, this is being passed to us, handed to us, who are already the shareholders. In theory, I do not own less of the company than I owned before these were passed out. I just own it on more shares. Everyone is receiving this dilution into your own um, account in the same proportion as everyone else. So whatever proportion of AMC you owned before this dividend, in theory, the math says you own the same percent of the company after. So that doesn't feel like dilution in my portfolio. It spreads it out across more shares. So that's the, you know, hardcore definition of dilution. However, I haven't myself in my portfolio been diluted because I own the same percent of the company, you know, before and after I go to bed. Um, there's no change there in my mind. So that's another thing. If you see people try to, I don't know, call this dilution or something, I would just think through if I owned 1% of the company when I went to bed, and I only wish I had that many shares, of course I don't, um, then when I wake up, I still own 1% of the company. I just have it on a different amount of shares. So anyway, you receive these amount of shares. Um, the reason I brought all that up is, sure, it may not stay the exact same price per share. I would think because of market efficiencies that the market has already responded. That's why probably AMC was down more than Ape was up today. That, and let's be real, I believe there was some manipulation and, and fraud in the markets. Um, and that's just what we're dealing with, you know? I've been here more than two years, so of you, we're dealing with that. So, I, you know, in this scenario, again, I'm keeping it sort of, I'm using air quotes here, kind of a dumb example. Um, I'm just keeping the math very simple. So you'll have to think through in your head, what do you think is the response of the market when this dividend is sort of paid out. Okay, in that case then, you have your 17 AMC. So you started with 150, you reverse split down to 15, but you also reverse split up the price so that didn't change your portfolio, ignoring market reactions. You got your two AMC paid out as that kind of dividend, and now you have 17 total. On the Ape side, you still just have those 15. So now you combine those, and post reverse split, post settlement payout, 
you have 32 AMC in this case. Um, and I'm saying at $80.1, so now your portfolio is $25.63. You're actually up. Whether it'll play out that way or not, I don't know. The main math that I can guarantee you on this page, of course I cannot guarantee anything about price, but I can guarantee you as long as I'm right in all the documents that I've been reading, this is the math on how your shares will work. Now I didn't do those fractional um, versions, so the reason I showed you this 150 is because you can see how easy it works out. So you get down to the 15 AMC, then you get your two um, shares of dividend paid out. So you're going to really need to think through how you feel about this AMC dividend versus how many APE you own. And I'm going to talk through more of that in a bit. But just keep in mind, there's a fractional consideration. Maybe I should have put it on this screen, like when the reverse split happens, you got to think in tens. Then after the reverse split, you got to think about seven and a halfs for this um, AMC common piece. And that's why you can see I've com combined them in a pre-reverse split. Um, basically, you want to own 150 lots of 150 AMC if you don't want any fractions at all. Now, I know some of us, um, or some of you, I guess, I, I, I'll be honest, I own quite a few shares. Some of you having 150 AMC is a reach. Um, so don't worry about it. Like, just do what's right for you and own the appropriate amount for you. But I just wanted to share kind of the math on how this works. Okay. I want to talk about now, I want to go away from all the math and that dry talk to what have we seen the last 24 hours? Boy, I have seen um, weeping and gnashing of teeth by some accounts, and I'm laughing because, uh, first off, a lot of the accounts I'm not surprised at all. They are accounts who have been openly bashing, constantly negative, um, whether they call us stupid, whether they call AA stupid, um, whether they, you know, hint at, or not even hint, openly accuse people of fraud, which by the way is libel, so a lot of you have opened yourselves to some libel suits when this is over. Um, you know, openly making allegations against Adam, the board, people like me. Uh, so those accounts, yeah, they don't surprise me, but you know, they were using words like heartbroken and just disgusted and anyway, and then today on Twitter I've seen some new ones too, some that I didn't necessarily know, some I suspected. Um, Here's my point. In chemistry, there's this idea that when you bring certain elements together, you can tell what you have by the way things will react. Um, you can measure reactions, and then you can actually identify what elements are in a compound. It's the same right now with, with uh, a lot of accounts who are very, very negative. I'm not talking about an ape who maybe has a different point of view than you or me and is maybe disappointed it didn't go the way they thought it would go. Like, that's life, that's people, and we should all work on rolling together. You know, apes together strong. But there are those who have absolutely outed themselves. I can see what element they're made out of, and ultimately I can tell which team they're playing for. So I just encourage you, watch people's reaction to this. If you're getting paid an AMC share dividend uh, while AMC is turning positive, and I'm going to show you in a minute why all of this, frankly, in my opinion, is so good, um, and the fact that I made that case, I think, last week uh, and got trolled harder than I've ever been trolled on YouTube told me we were over the target. You know, they come out when they don't like what we have to say. So, again, reactions tell you what elements are in the compound. And in this case, what I'm saying is people's reaction tell you which team they're playing for. And make no mistake, I've been deep in this for more than two years, and especially on the Twitter side, frauds, fakes, manipulators, influencers tried to surround me many times. And you learn how to spot them over time. There are patterns. There are absolutely people working for the bad guys who want to influence our sentiment. You know, watch my Tigers and Frogs video and I kind of tell you a little bit about how influencers work and how to watch for that. So just pay attention to how people react. I'm not saying they have to agree with you. We're not a cult. People can disagree, and in fact, we make each other stronger sometimes with through that disagreement and working through to the best ideas together. But the people who are really just over the top, negatively reacting, spewing hate, all that stuff, I would just personally step away from them. And my point of view is we spread truth, we spread facts, we spread positivity. I'm not going to waste my time with the trolls. They're not worth it to me. Okay, reminder of the pieces. So here's the part where I've actually done this in another video. Um, you know, skip ahead a little bit if you've already seen this, 
or it's a great reminder. And if you haven't seen it, I think it's really important to understand this because uh, for me, it gives me a lot of bullishness. And I'll try to go faster than I did in the other video. You can just see this one. It was kind of from a week or so ago. All right, so first of all, what's going on with the banks? All the banks are melting down. You guys have seen that. There's a massive liquidity crisis going on. So that means banks need capital, right? At a time when, now that this has passed, have you guys seen the article? I, um, someone kind of came out, maybe it was Yahoo or I forget who. Someone basically said, man, when this um, conversion happens, AMC may have access to as much as 16 one six billion dollars of cash um now i don't think it's not like adam's going to be able to dump all the shares on the market just like that that'd be pretty wild but the point is amc has access to capital now what did i just say what do the banks need the banks need capital adam has access to capital through this share vote we just did at a time when the fed is going to be printing money effectively if you kind of look at they're stuck in terms of keeping rates up because they're fighting inflation but all the banks need all this liquidity, so the Fed's gonna probably kind of be running uh, effectively the money printer. There's various ways, it goes by various names, uh, but in effect, the Fed is trying to inject liquidity. Well, what does that do? That kind of devalues the dollar. Well, if the dollar devalues, guess what goes up in value? Precious metals, right? And so at a time when banks need capital, Adam has capital, the Fed will be injecting liquidity, which will drive the dollar down. That's going to drive gold up. Guess what else Adam got us in? Oh, a gold and silver mine. And I've said before on this channel, I'd love if we find lithium as well. And I've also said, um, you know, I'm talking about gold and silver in light of sort of currency devaluation. But the other thing to keep in mind is um, gold in particular, but silver too, is also a component in kind of computing, in electric vehicles, um, even in crypto mining components, basically computing again. So it's not only a currency, uh, it's not only valuable because of that, it's also valuable in manufacturing of things that our society needs right now. So pretty awesome that Adam's got us in that. All of this at a time when AMC's fundamentals are improving and it's going to start generating cash. You know, I've walked through, um, look for a video I called, I think I called it like win profits or something, and I go through the forecasts and what movies are out there and all that and it's my point of view here in q2 that we're going to have profits so if we just put that together and i'm sorry i'm flying through but you know i had a whole other video on this if you want to see me go slower through this so banks basically say hey i need cash but remember they're holding amc debt amc has close to five billion dollars in debt still well that's sitting with the banks and yeah they're getting future payments on that debt but the banks may actually say hmm amc you know, shareholders just approved all this access to capital. So that's going through now that the lawsuit is getting settled. Adam can say, hey, I've got access to cash. What What about this bank? What if I trade you some cash to pay my debt? But what if I do that at a discount? The banks will be like, yeah, here's a 50% discount. Now I made up that 50% number, but before you accuse me of just speculating and making stuff up, go back through the different filings and through Adam's announcements over the past year or so. Um, multiple times he has paid down debt. I think it's to the tune of, you know, 300 million ish. I've got to go back and look at that number again. I've got it in some spreadsheet somewhere. Um, almost every time it's been at a significant discount. I think the last one was maybe a 47% discount uh, in December. Uh, there's been other times it's been high 30% discounts. So here's the bank saying, I'm desperate for cash. And Adam comes around and says, well, I've got cash. Uh, would you like to have a lot more money now versus me paying this off slowly over time? And the banks are like, yeah, I need money now. And so that's why they offer a discount. It's actually a benefit to both sides. They get cash now. AMC gets a discount on the debt. And think about what that looks like. If let's say he pays off $5 billion of debt, but only costs, say, $3 billion to do it. Well, that's an instant return on the balance sheet because the dilution is only the $3 billion worth of shares, let's say he has to sell, but he got a $5 billion return. So our shares actually would go up. Yes, I said that. Our shares in that case would go up because he made AMC's books $5 billion better, but it only cost him $3 billion. That's a return. And so there's, you know, dilution is not always bad, guys. If it creates value, I did a whole... Uh, video you can go find as well on dilution and just educating on what that is and how um, business leaders create value. Uh, if you're new here, 
I've, I've shared a couple times, and I only just share this for credibility, not as a brag. I have two masters in business. I worked for 21 years at a Dow Jones company. Um, you know, I know what I'm talking about here. Doesn't mean I'm always right. Doesn't mean I'm smarter than anybody, but it means I've been in this area in terms of leading businesses. All right, so that's awesome. AMC is positioned perfectly for what's going on at the banks, but let's look at the rest. I talked about that Fed money printer that's devaluing the, the dollar. Well, right at a time when AMC is already invested in the alternatives to the dollar, gold and silver. That's AUAG. Those are the elemental you know, names. Maybe you kind of know that, abbreviations. And then, of course, crypto is another thing to be thinking about. Um, that's just a, I don't know, side note opinion on kind of investing right now. And again, I can't give advice, but maybe you're thinking about US dollar alternatives in your portfolio. Well, if you're invested in AMC, you're already invested in a gold mine. So that's awesome. And at a time when the business itself is improving, which will generate more cash. So it's this like virtuous positive loop that's going on. So Adam has all the pieces positioned so perfectly and no wonder they came with this lawsuit to try to hold it up because all of that kind of connects to the first point I made, which is that access to capital. Let's skip forward. Let's talk about the outlook. Um, what comes next? So we're in Q2, right? Literally today, Mario's coming out. Air, you know, the sort of Jordan Nike movies coming out. John Wick is still rolling. Scream is still rolling. Dungeons and Dragons seems to have gotten off to a great start. I really want to go see that one. I'm hearing great things. If you look at the rest of the quarter, you know, just name a few movies here. You've got like The Little Mermaid, you've got Guardians of the Galaxy, you've got um, at the very end of the quarter, a little bit of revenue from Indiana Jones, uh, you've got the um, Transformers movie that with the big, you know, ape Transformer, which, awesome, I'm super excited about that, that I mean, it's called Rise of the Apes, or no, Rise of the Beasts, I think, uh, but, you know, might as well call it Rise of the Apes, I'm pretty excited about that one. So there's enough movies and enough big movies this quarter that I'm actually forecasting, you know, along with the popcorn ramping up, you know, if you think popcorn's been fun so far, what does that look like as volumes come in, more doors are opened? You know, um, I told you I worked at a Dow Jones company. I One of my jobs for a while was assessing how many doors were certain product in and so how much could you sell and all of that. Well, remember, we're not even close to being in all the Walmarts yet. And, and we haven't rolled out the microwave popcorn. So as we roll out more product, as we roll out more doors, you're going to see that volume increase. Eventually, Adam talked about getting into 7-Elevens and all that, and we haven't really seen it even being sold online. So movies coming um, is awesome. Go look at, um, like there's a, there's a website, I think it's called Box Office Insider. You could also look at Box Office Mojo. You can look at IMDb. Look at all the movies that are coming out uh, April, May, June. That's, that's second quarter. Any movies coming out April, May, June, whew, it's a huge list, a really great list of movies that I'm super excited about, and we're going to be rocking and rolling. So I'm actually forecasting positive earnings per share for the first time ever um, since COVID. I, I always tell you guys on this channel, um, there's a saying in forecasting, if you have a forecast, it's wrong. So please don't count on that at all. But I'm just telling you one guy's point of view. My point of view is this is a positive quarter. Why did I bring that up in the middle of talking about this settlement and the conversion and all that? Let's go back actually to doo -doo -doo, to this piece, the reactions. You're going to be guided into negative sentiment. People do not want you positive. There are a lot of accounts out there who clearly their whole job is to spread negative sentiment. So it does not matter what happens. Haven't you ever noticed, like, if there's a great movie that comes out, ah, the movie kind of sucked. I didn't like that actor. I didn't like that actress. I thought the theater was cold, blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, Adam announces a dividend. Oh, it's not enough of a dividend. Or, you know, no matter what happens, they're going to have some negative thing to say, right? Well... If you don't want them leading what you do, do the opposite. Have positive things to say. And I'm not talking about making stuff up and being, you know, spreading hopium. I'm talking about spreading real news like I just did with you. Look at the list of movies coming out. Go see them. I'm going to take my family to see Mario and holy cow, are we excited about that one. I'm sure that we're going to go more than once. Think about how much money that movie is going to be printing for AMC. So spread truth. But that truth feels very positive to me right now. Popcorn ramping up, credit cards coming, 
Celebrate the movies. Celebrate apes. I think there's a lot of good going on. And so that's the reason I come back to the outlook. Whenever someone tries to distract me, I come back to what matters. And what matters is the business results and the way the business is ramping up. All right. So back to the settlement and the conversion. You've got some choices in your portfolio. I get asked this a lot. Again, I cannot give any advice. Okay. But I'm going to tell you the things that I think about, the questions I ask. So I can give you the questions. I just can't give you the answers. So... One is, hey, retail, you know, should I sort of keep my AMC or, you know, should I buy more AMC? And so here's some just things to consider. Obviously, cost to borrow is crazy high right now. Well, that's putting pressure on the shorts. Um, shares on loan is pretty much at an all-time high or may even be at an all-time high. I hadn't checked today. I know um, the other day it hit an all-time high. It was like over $200 million. And for every 7.5 or really 75 pre reverse split or for every seven and a half post reverse split AMC you own, remember you're getting that dividend. So there's some future value in owning AMC currently. So this would be what I would be asking myself. How do I feel about the cost to borrow and the shares on loan? Is that making AMC squeezable or not? Um, how do I feel about this dividend that's coming? Is it giving me some value that I like? So that might be some questions I'm asking. And you know, there's others. It's okay to ask about the reverse split and the, all of those things and the conversion and ape coming in. So then people ask me, well, should I maybe keep my ape or buy more ape? Okay, so some things I'm thinking about there. One is, at some point when that converts to AMC, it, it just becomes AMC at whatever price AMC was at that time. Um, and then, of course, the market reacts after that, so you've always got to think that through. But So what is the sort of conversion value to you in your mind based on your DD? What's the value of, of ape becoming AMC? And what's the value of the fact that that represents future shares of AMC? It's all going to become this new kind of smushed together AMC. So any ape you own or any AMC you own is a future share of AMC. So what's the value of that to you? So, you know, sorry that I can't tell anybody what to do, and I'm not going to tell you what I'm doing, um, but I am going to tell you these are the things I think through. And so for me, I'll just be as transparent as I can be. I see value in both of them. And... I, you know, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. I see value in both of them, and I own them both. There is another choice. Um, oh, so actually, let me, I guess I wanted to let this hit home. So basically, it's considerations, right? So what do you consider if you're going to go with AMC? What do you consider if you're buying Ape? If you're just going to whine and be negative, then you can consider leaving. I'm just going to say that as clearly as I can. If you're whining and being negative and you don't trust this CEO and you don't trust the board, I have no idea why you're in this play. You should never invest in a company where you don't trust the leadership. I've said that before on this channel. I've said that on Twitter. Don't invest in a company where you don't trust the leadership. Plain and simple. I can't say it more clearly. So if you're going to whine at AA or be all negative and you're going to come at me, you're not going to like my answer. It's going to be one of two things. I'm going to completely give you the silent treatment or I'm going to tell you where you can go because I'm not entertaining that. I'm invested in this because I believe in this leadership. That's it, plain and simple. I don't mind owning that. Trolls come at me and they say I'm some kind of fanboy and whatever. Nah, I've shown you from the business side where I believe this business is going. I believe this leadership has done a great job. Go see another video where I talk through, there's three years of human behavior that they've shown us um, in this play, pretty much. Well, actually, so not just this play, but since COVID, um, you know, they've navigated for three years and not allowed this company to go bankrupt. If that's not enough demonstration of who they are for you, fine. There's the door. You don't even need to announce you're leaving. It's not an airport. See ya. So, as far as whether you want to keep or buy AMC, whether you want to keep or buy APE, what your balance is between them, I cannot tell you. I always say, though, do what's right for you. Don't ever let anyone else push you around. Don't ever let anyone else tell you what to do with your portfolio. Do your DD, do your research, do what's right for you, financially, emotionally, all of that. All right, so in summary, the reverse split is happening. People's reactions tell you which team they're on. I'm viewing this basically as a dividend that's being paid on AMC Common Shares, and um, Adam has positioned, I believe, AMC for perfectly timed success based on everything going on in those pieces I showed you. We've got the Transformers movie 
coming. Rise of the Beasts. So that's what I said on a recent video, and I'm going to say it again. It's time for us to rise. Let's go.